Okay. Hey, everyone. Hi. <laughs> uh, okay, so how many people have actually used Kafka before? Just so I, I gauge correctly. So maybe about 50%. All right, so th this is going to be about stuff that's in the next, you know, upcoming release that we're about to do. Uh, for people who have never used Kafka before, the talk right before this is probably more useful. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, so this is about, you know, uh, where we're going uh, in the next release and a little bit beyond that, um, and a little bit about where we've been. So, um, so I guess whenever you talk about progress, there's two ways to talk about. One is kind of top up, and the other is is bottom down. Uh, I'll start with the, uh, you know, kind of. That was not right. Top down, <laughs> bottom up. Uh, I'll start with the top down. This is the same picture I think Joe was showing. This is the kind of commit log for your data center picture. Um, you know, this, this is kind of the big dream is that you can collect, you know, changes happening in databases, events, log data, whatever, and you can feed it back into drive stores. You can do stream processing on it and transform it and munge it into something else in real time. You can kind of load it into the, the offline world. Um, and you can hook up like analytical systems. And this is this is something I spent um, a bunch of time doing at LinkedIn. Um, this is kind of their high level data flow architecture. Um, and so so one way to think about uh, like where we're going is, you know, how 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 realistic is this? How <laughs> how close are we to making that a reality? Um, you know, there's a there's a couple things you have to make make work for this to happen, right? You have to have you know scalability so you can dump all your data in. You have to have strong enough guarantees that you're you're not losing updates as they flow from place to place. Um, you know, integration with stream processing I think requires particular semantics. Um, there's a, there's a bunch of things you have to do, and, and probably more than anything, um, really kind of operability and multi-tenancy, like the ability to have a system you can run at the center of things that everything connects into that doesn't you know fall over. Um, and so so those are kind of like the high level requirements. Where we've been, you know, we started very early on um, with like pretty good scalability, uh, efficiency, and persistence, but no real like hard fault tolerance guarantees. Um, maybe about a year, year and a half ago, we kind of redid everything to give like very strong uh, consistency and durability guarantees for, for each write. Um, that was this release here, and now we're we're doing one more release in this kind of sequence. Um, so. So you know, in this second release, we basically added fault tolerance. We added a feature called log compaction, which I'll, I'll talk about a little bit more. Uh, we added you know a stronger partitioning model for semantically partitioning your data. And at this point, it basically became good for data that, that you're you know don't want to lose. Um, and it became better for for stream processing. Um, and so that takes us up to the release that's currently out there in Apache. Um, and the release we're about to do is is 0.82. Um, so we have these. These decimal point releases. When we get the whole vision done, then that's one, right? It's like open source. So. Uh, <laughs> one is done, right? You, uh, uh, okay, so, so the, the new things um, in 082, operational improvements, I kind of talked about that. That's always the most critical thing. Um, a new way of storing consumer positions. I'll get into that a little bit. And a new uh, version of the Java producer. Um, Timeline, uh, we've only just started talking about this, but realistically, I think we're, we're pretty close to being able to do like a beta release. Um, previously, we've always just done a real release and then realized retrospectively it was a beta release. <laughs> uh, but I think maybe this time we should uh, label it beta. The, the trade-off with open source is if you call it beta, nobody tries it. Um, but but it's, it's the same thing whether you put beta in the name or not. Um, okay, so, so what, what are the operational improvements? Well, like dynamically deleting topics, Crazily enough, you couldn't do this. Uh, people who are using Kafka have been asking for this a lot. Um, <laughs> balancing leadership among among all the machines. Uh, this is like, okay, if a machine fails and then comes back, does it take over all of its load properly? Um, some quotas. We've done a lot of work on um, latency. So this is, you know, from the point of view of somebody writing, uh, how long does it take us to acknowledge their message and say, yeah, we, we got that? Um, and, you know, more nuanced durability and consistency controls for, for kind of more critical data. Um, so those are kind of like high level overview of the operational improvements. This is along with you know several hundred bug fixes uh, that went in on this. The other thing we redid was the offset storage. So this is all about uh, where all your consumers are. So you know previously we used Zookeeper for offset storage. It's it's a pretty abusive use of Zookeeper. Uh, which we knew, but you know, Zookeeper was there anyway for other things, uh, so so we just did it, um, and that works uh, up to you know a certain point, 
And then Zookeeper, if people have worked with it, it doesn't really, it's not meant to like scale horizontally. So we, we, you know, we had one scalability plan, which is we moved it to SSDs. And then it got a lot faster and that fixed the problem for a while. <laughs> but unfortunately, we didn't really have a next plan after that. And so we had to, at a certain point, improve the software. So, so we wrote like a native uh, offset storage mechanism. This is actually kind of interesting because it stores all the offsets. The offset is the consumer's position in the log. And you can imagine if you have thousands of these consumers and they're all updating their position all the time, then that's like lots of, of updates. Um, so, so we actually store this in a Kafka topic uh, itself. Um, and it works with this new log compaction mechanism uh, to make sure that that topic doesn't continue to grow forever. Um, and this is, this is part of uh, getting Zookeeper out of the clients. Like one of, one of the high level goals we have is to make it much easier to write clients, especially consumers. So we've, we've gotten Zookeeper out of the producer, um, and this is the first part of getting it out of the, the consumer. Okay, so I'll touch just really briefly on log compaction. This is a feature we did in the last release. Uh, not that many people know about it. Um, you know, as Joe said, what Kafka is doing is maintaining a log, right? And, you know, a log is all the updates or events that happen. At some point, you have to throw away data. Um, and so, you know, the, the original mechanism we had for this was just throw away after some period of time or throw away after some size. Um, but an interesting mechanism for, for retention that's, you know, different than those is actually to retain by key. So, so guarantee that you retain the final key for each value. This turns out to be kind of odd when you describe it to the people. They're like, huh. Um, but it turns, to, it turns out to map really well to like any kind of mutability uh, thing. So, so how many people have heard of like event sourcing? It's like kind of a different crowd than the big data people somehow, but there's like some overlap. And the event sourcing people are all about this. Um, so so you know, the other things this is useful for is in a stream processing system, you can log you know, local state changes. Um, we did this in SAMHSA, which is a stream processing system that works with Kafka. Um, it's also really good for, for capturing database changes where you, you might want to retain a full backup of, of the data to, to reload from. So this is kind of an interesting feature. If you're intrigued by that, you can look it up and read all about it in the documentation. All right, so the next thing that's coming is, is a new Java producer. Um, we're actually redoing both the Java clients, the consumer and the producer. Uh, we finished the producer. The consumer's kind of in progress. Um, so there, there's a couple things this does. You know, it's, it's basically better, better hygiene. It's a totally separate client. It lives outside of the main server code base. Um, there's no Scala dependency anymore. Like, yeah, I know. Uh, it turns out that Scala is really hard to use by other people using Scala. <laughs> it's actually not that hard for people using Java because they don't care what Scala version you're on. But like, for people using Scala, it's not that compatible, which um, was sort of a problem for us. So, uh, you know, it, it fixes a ton of, uh, like, minor issues in the producer, um, but it's actually, like, a pretty big re-architecture of how the producer works as well. Um, so so it, it, it does a really good job of bounding the memory usage. Um, it changes the API. So previously there was a distinction between a synchronous, you know, or an async producer. Now there is only an async producer, but you can always wait until the acknowledgement comes back. So it's like... More general, you get the best of both worlds, and, and you get much, much better efficiency and throughput. So the big, the big outcome here was performance. So this API looks like this. You kind of instantiate a producer. Um, these are these like epically long Java lines, because that's just how it is. Um, and then you would, send, you would send the record that you made here. This send is always non-blocking. So it says, oh, yes, I've sent it. And it gives you back some future for the um, offset that that record would be assigned. And um, when you call get on that future, it would be complete. You can also do it with a callback for people who don't like futures. Um, so that's what the API looks like. You know, the, main, the main improvement here is the single node performance for the producer is much better. So I, I did some write-up on you know, some of the performance, uh, like some blog posts. Um, this was for like 100 byte messages, like really small messages. But essentially, this means that now the producer can max out you know, like a one gigabyte network card. We always could do that with the consumer side, but the producer uh, was harder to get that kind of throughput for. And what's more impressive is you can actually get that throughput with you know, threefold replication. Um, and actually, even synchronous replication, where for each write, you're waiting until it's fully acknowledged. Um, even in that mode, is actually not that much, that much worse. Um, and the, you know, this is actually with no uh, artificial batching like you would have with that async producer. So, so the round trip latency is like a few milliseconds, it's very good. 
So this, this actually makes, from the producer's point of view, things really nice. Uh, we're going to go back and redo a similar thing on the, on the consumer side. Um, what this looks like in terms of code, for people who are you know, nerds about network programming, the old way it worked was um, basically using blocking I.O., um, which is like terrible, but for historical reasons was there. And so if you were communicating to multiple copy nodes from your producer process, it would be like send, and then it would wait for that to complete, and then it would send, and it would wait for that to complete. Um, so the throughput was not great, um, especially as this cluster got, got larger and larger. Um, the, new, you know, the new producer is basically using um, parallel pipeline requests to each node and asynchronous I.O., so it pulls on this. And all this queuing of requests is now totally binary, so you can, you can bound the amount of memory that's being used really nicely. Uh, it just overall makes it more robust. Okay, so that's what's in 082 at a high level. Of course, like any of these things, there's like lots of GRS uh, that people can take a look at if they're interested. So, so what's next? What's left you know, to get to this uh, awesome vision where you know, data's flowing around in real time? Um, so a couple things. We're, we're, we're doing the same thing we did uh, to the producer, uh, to the consumer uh, for Java. Our goal was to have like, an example good client in Java that everybody else can kind of copy uh, that's, that's efficient. Um, and I'll talk about that. We're working on security. Um, there's, there's always continuing operational improvements. And then some semantic stuff. So I'll, I'll run through these really quickly. So the next release, uh, which we're you know, tentatively calling 0.9, but uh, whatever, is going to have this new consumer. Um, and you know, it will basically help collapse the distinction for people who have used Kafka between this high-level consumer and the low-level consumer. We basically have an easy-to-use high-level consumer, which it somehow is missing at least one feature that everybody needs. Um, and then we have this really hard-to-use low-level uh, consumer, which um, can do anything, but like is very difficult to program to. So that's obviously not ideal. Um, so we're collapsing those and making it hopefully a little more flexible. Um, it'll allow you to control your position much more flexibly as a consumer, so you can move forward and backwards in the stream and do other kinds of stuff. Um, which is, I think, you know, especially useful for these kind of non-traditional message processing uses. Um, okay, so security. Um, there's, there's actually a pretty good uh, wiki on this, as well as a set of JIRAs now, so you can follow along. If people are interested in security or know about it, it would be awesome to get feedback. This is one of these things where you really want to make sure it's going to work in different people's environments, and, and understanding those environments is important. Um, but this is you know, basic authentication, so who are you, and then access control of like which topics can you read and write, write to. Okay, there's, there's an ongoing set of operational improvements which are needed, right? Um, so more automated balancing of data between nodes. We've, we've left everything pretty manual at this point. Like failover between nodes is, is automatic, but we don't like move terabytes of data around when a node disappears. That's like an administrative thing. So getting better at that. Um, scaling the overall number of partitions that we support. Like Kafka is very scalable for the number of messages and the write throughput. Um, but but really only goes up to maybe the tens of thousands of partitions um, for a variety of reasons. So, so being able to improve that, um, and then you know better quotas or throttling. Um, so if you have one of these shared clusters that lots of people write to, if one person goes crazy, they get, they don't break everybody else. They only break themselves. Uh, and then we've we've done some interesting prototyping uh, recently uh, for stronger semantics. So what this is. You know, this is about guaranteeing um, exactly once delivery. I'm going to put it in quotes because that requires some participation from whoever's consuming the data as well. But you know, effectively, if you if you write, this is true for a database or Kafka or almost anything. If you write and you get an an error back that says, "Oh, like network error," you usually don't know if that write happened, right? Um, and so it is it is actually possible for a you know consistent. Um, replicated system like Kafka to give you stronger semantics and actually make those retries safe. Um, but, but right now, we, we don't do that. We just give you at least once delivery, which is not strong. Yeah. Um, and then transactions that, that span across uh, partitions or topics, so you can do like, you know, write, 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 commit, and have it all either happen together or not happen together. Um, these primarily are you know, useful for cases where you're reading data from one place doing something and writing it out somewhere else. Um, that's true when you're mirroring data like between clusters or between data centers. It's true for a lot of the stream processing use cases. So, so we had some smart people come in and do, um, as an internship, 
uh, with one of the main engineers. We did like a prototype of transactions, and we had some proof of concept of idempotence, but it's not it's not anywhere near the code base yet. So I put some one dot question mark as to when it will actually come out. Um, and then finally, um, community stuff. Um, there, there's actually been a lot of new contributors recently, which is fantastic. Uh, you could be one if you're interested in this. Uh, there's a whole bunch of what we call newbie Jira's. So like if you're interested in contributing to a project like this, you can go into Jira and just look for newbie. And these, these are like really easy to get started on things. And then you can say that, you know, this is a new messaging system and I wrote part of it. Uh, <laughs> even if it's a very small part. And of course, this, this talk has been very focused on like the core um, messaging system. I haven't focused on all the stuff that's happening in the ecosystem. Like there's a bunch of clients. There's increasingly good integration with stream processing systems. Um, there's a bunch of integrations with other data systems, which are you know as important. But I you know that's probably too broad. Um, and I think I, I had uh, 20 minutes, which gives me five more. So if there's questions, maybe I can take them. Joe, am I allowed to take a couple questions? Or, okay. All right. Does anyone have any questions? No. Can we fix the minimum ISR problem? Uh, I I think we have. It's committed. Zero. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That was Gwen. They'll be in zero eight. Yeah. 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 Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> any other any other questions? All right. Cool. Who's next? Gwen's next. Awesome.